Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey everybody, welcome. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Shane Dials. I'm a comedian, a husband, and a student. And I'm sure my wife wishes that I said those in a different order. Uh, I'm currently pursuing a degree in creative writing with a focus on screenwriting for television and film. So aside from my classes, I've been trying to study and analyze movies as I watch them. I bought a notebook, and I'll try and break them down into the Save the Cat beat sheet. Uh, if you don't know what a beat sheet is, it's just a couple things I'd like to explain to kind of catch you up to speed. A movie is made up of story and plot. Story is pretty straightforward. It's just the story they're trying to tell, such as boy gets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. Uh, the plot is just a series of the events that tell the story such as how the boy got the girl, how he lost her, and how he's going to get her back. So what's a beat? Beats are what we call the events of the plot when looking at the movie as a whole. So a beat sheet is just an organized list of the movie's events that writers can look at when trying to structure the plot in a way that best explains the story. So what is the Save the Cat beat sheet? The book, Save the Cat, is established author and screenwriter Blake Snyder's blueprint on how to write a movie. Aside from dialogue or showing you how to properly format a screenplay, Blake shows you how to structure a movie and piece it together. Some of you might be thinking, don't buy into the Hollywood trap of pre-structured screenplays just because it works. That a true artist should have to struggle with the story and find new and inventive ways to tell it. That you should be so passionate and moved by a story that you feel a complete, overwhelming urge to will it into existence. Yes, some people talk like this artists and people who want to be seen as or called an artist. To which I would reply, you have to start somewhere. Learn story structure before you start trying to deviate from it or break it. Before someone's a jazz musician, they're just a musician. They had to learn song structure and music theory before they can manipulate it. So that's where I'm at. I'm spending my free time researching movies and their structure. I'm also going to be making these videos as a way for me to reflect upon everything I'm learning, putting that knowledge into use, and constantly thinking about my craft as a whole. So out of all the books on screenwriting, why am I using this one as a reference to dissect movies? Well, as a comedian, you learn very quickly that brevity is levity. You understand structure and writing, but more than anything, you appreciate the ability to be able to convey a point with as few words as possible. And that's exactly what Blake Snyder does in Save the Cat. He gives you movie structure, and he shows you his method for putting it together. And he does it all quicker than Robert McKee did in story, than Sid Field did in screenplay, than Jack Epps in screenwriting as rewriting, than David Trottier did in the screenwriter's bible, and this last one is embarrassing, screenwriting for dummies. So this book is essentially just that guy you see in all those YouTube videos where people are bungee jumping but they're too scared to leave the platform, so he's actually being paid just to push them off. Ah, uh, is it bad I want that job? I dig holiday movies, like a lot. And the other day, me and my wife got snacks and we're sitting down flipping Netflix and we came across The Princess Switch switched again. Forewarning, I saw The Princess Switch last year when it came out. Vanessa Hudgens plays two... Uh, is that her name? Hudgens? Hudgens? I saw the first one. The Princess Switch, in which Vanessa Hudgens plays two people. A princess who's being matched up to marry a prince, and a baker from Chicago, you know this because she's always wearing a really generic Chicago hat throughout the movie, uh, wins a trip to a baking competition in Bulgaria, where she runs into the other Vanessa Hudgens. They switch spots. The baker gets together with the prince, and the princess gets together with Vanessa Hudgens' partner, who is also a baker. That's it, right? That's the princess switch in a nutshell. We understand the premise. I gotta tell you, I thought I was gonna be able to wrap my head around this movie. I thought the switched again part just implied that they were going to switch spots again, do the same thing, and you know, what, what could go wrong? There's nothing but positive outcomes from the first one. What could possibly go wrong? A lot, a lot could go wrong. The first one starred Vanessa Hudgens playing two people that looked alike. This one has three, and it absolutely melts in my mind. Vanessa Hudgens in this one plays Stacy, Fiona, and Margaret. Maybe I'll do like a cut, like shoo, shoo, shoo. She plays Fiona, Stacy, and Margaret. Yeah, we'll give that a shot. You thought James McAvoy playing 24 personalities and Split was impressive? Wait till you see Vanessa Hudgens play two people 
than one of their cousins who is impersonating the other Vanessa Hudgens. Was that confusing? Because if so, strap in. If you thought I was being sarcastic about her playing multiple people, I don't even know if I was. She plays three different people. They all have different personalities, one of which you loathe the second she comes on the screen. But it's kind of exciting to watch her have to pretend to be the other Vanessa Hudgens later. Listen, the whole inspiration behind this video and this channel was as we were watching this movie, I got so confused, I had to pause the movie, laugh, and try and figure out what was going on, and my wife started filming me. So sporadically, throughout this beat sheet, while I describe this movie, I'll be cutting to me trying to comprehend this movie in real time. Now, the target demographic for this movie is clearly like 8 to 13 year old girls and my 30 year old wife. Alright, so one last bit of information before we jump into the beat sheet. Uh, in the realm of movies, it's very common knowledge that one page of a screenplay equals roughly about one minute of screen time in a movie. So when we break the movies down, you're going to see a page number. It'll say page 10. That just means that we're roughly at the 10 minute mark in the movie. Page 25, we'd be at the 25 minute mark in the movie. Alright, so we start with the opening image. It's an animated recap of the first one. The two, the baker, the princess, they switch. I'll put up a graphic of the animation or something, and you can see that. You probably remember me. I'm Stacy, that baker from Chicago, who flew to Belgravia to enter a baking contest, but then switched places with Margaret, the Duchess of Montanaro, who looks just like me. So by page five of the movie, we hope to have the theme stated. And at the five minute mark in this movie, we see Prince Albert tell <laughs> Prince Edward, <laughs> Prince Albert something else, tell Stacy that their relationship's important too. And the theme of the movie is stated. We know that themes can't be only one word, like love, although that's the underlying message here. It has to be something along the lines of like, love trumps work obligations, or the importance of a work-life balance and a love life. So the setup should happen between pages 1 and 10. And at the 8 minute mark in the movie, the whole exposition of the film is laid out. Stacy goes to Chicago, her hometown, to get Kevin, her friend, and Baker back together with Margaret, who is now becoming the queen of Montanaro. On page 12, we have the catalyst. And after a montage of the entire cast decorating a palace for Christmas and some serious 90s acting of laughing, reflecting on what you looked at, and laughing again... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what does that remind me of? I know. Now, we see Kevin and Mark break off by themselves. They hit the kitchen and try to make some hot chocolate for everybody. And after a cutesy exchange of flower fighting... <coughs> not funny. No. Oh, you want funny? I'm going give you funny. No. What? No, no. <laughs> we actually see Margaret start to realize and remember what it's like to be with Kevin. And at minute 14, we enter Antonio. Margaret's new love interest, who we hate inherently because we're already so invested in Kevin from the first movie. Also, I don't know what it is about the guy, but we know for some reason that he doesn't really care about Margaret. He just wants the power that comes along with being with her. And I'm not sure if it's because the movie's just so cliche that we can just kind of see that coming, or if it was written into the screenplay and the actor is just playing it that way to where there's a lot of subtle things that I'm not picking up on or noticing right away, but everybody pretty much gets that feeling. At 20 minutes, there's a ceremony and Kevin pushes Antonio's ass out of the way and shows off his dance moves. I must say you are the most beautiful monarch in the history of Montanaro. I've heard that our first queen, Judith the Brave, rivaled Helen of Troy. Yeah, but her dance moves really suck though. Just show them how it's done. All right. You'll excuse me. 
Now we're at pages 12 to 25, the debate. At the 21 minute mark, we meet Margaret's cousin Fiona, played by Vanessa Hudgens. <sighs> Maggie Moo. Who is a sort of pop culture obsessed, self-absorbed, social, what are they called? Social influencer. Uh, social influencer? Social influencer? Social influencer? Is that what they're called? Social influencer? Social influencer? What are they called? Susan! Are they called social influencers? Huh? Okay. At the 21 minute mark, we meet Margaret's cousin Fiona, played by Vanessa Hudgens, who is this like pop culture obsessed, self absorbed, social influencer <laughs> stain on society. We also meet her two lackeys. One of which, whose only character trait is that his eyebrow is constantly up. Double chin, that's a delete. But no worries, it happens. Not to me, but it happens. It's here we hear the worst part of dialogue in the movie. Kevin plans a spontaneous car ride on the following day with Margaret. Things used to be so spontaneous for us. Well, here's an idea. Why don't we go back to spontaneous? How? Well, if you have time tomorrow, maybe we can go for a drive. <laughs> As friends. Sure. As friends. At page 30, we enter the B story. Typically, the B story in a movie is the love story, but as the main purpose of this movie is to get Kevin and Margaret back together, the B story enters in and just throws the whole movie into a chaotic spin. It's here that we see Fiona cut and dye her hair to look exactly like Margaret and Stacy. And her plan is to kidnap Margaret, take her power, transfer money to a bank account, and then go live on an island somewhere. So now there is three identical Vanessa Hudgens. Is Hudgenses? Hudgenses. I don't know. I, the next movie is just going to be The Princess Switch. I don't even know. What was that joke that I wrote that one time? Margaret and Stacy decide to switch again so that Margaret can go on her date with Kevin. So there's three girls that look alike. <laughs> Two of them switch to be one another so they can fix relationships. The queen needs more time to talk to her, like, boyfriend who she broke up with. And so they switch spots. So, <laughs> so okay. So they switch spots so that the queen can spend time with the boyfriend she broke up with. The other girl is playing herself as her husband comes up and talks to her. And tells her, like, hey, I think I'm really letting my wife down. I'm honestly worried that somehow I've let her down. <laughs> she's, she's, she's pretending to be her royalty, who this guy's talking to. So her husband's like, hey, I'm letting you down. And she goes, no, nah, trust me, you'll be fine. We're doing good, dude. Everything will be all right, Edward. I promise. Now, the best part of every single movie, the fun and games portion. From pages 30 to 55, where you see the new life unfolding. And essentially, it's the life that Margaret chose to go on. Her call to adventure was to switch spots so that she could see if she wanted to get back with Kevin. And everything is going great. It's everything we saw in the first movie, again. There's no negative consequences. She's enjoying all of her time with Kevin. Meanwhile, back at the castle, Stacy is confronted by Prince Edward. <laughs> and he's telling her like, hey, I, I, you know, I think uh, I'm really letting my wife down. Little does he know he's talking to his wife, who is Stacy pretending to be Margaret. We hit the midpoint at page 55 where insanity ensues as Fiona kidnaps Stacy, who is pretending to be Margaret. And if that didn't blow your mind, here's a video of it destroying mine. This third character comes in, the cousin, cuts her hair, dyes it, looks just like these two chicks. She actually knocks out the friend who is impersonating the original princess, knocks her out, and uh, kidnaps her, and then takes her place. So there's, <laughs> there's a lady in a closet, there's the cousin pretending to be a new person, or to be the original person, right? But nobody knows that this person is introduced in the mix. Oh my God. Stars. 
this lady. Uh, page 55 to 75, we have bad guys close in. Where Fiona and her lackeys have kidnapped who they think is Margaret, and they're actually pulling it off. Little do they know, they took Stacy instead. At page 75, we have the all is law section, and it couldn't be more clear than in this movie. Margaret loses everything. Remember the fun and game section? All the nice times with Kevin? Gone. Fiona dumps Kevin. He leaves. And it's at this point in the film where everybody's mind starts getting blown. To the point where Kevin goes in there. He's talking to Fiona, acting like Margaret, after they had this amazing day. And she's like, ah, I love you. You know, we should be back together. Kevin's like, hey, I had a really good time today. She's like, nah, dude, I can't have it. And he's like, what? She's like, nah, I, I had fun too, but I just can't do it. I gotta be queen or something. He's like, you sure? Because this really doesn't sound like you. We had this great day. And she goes, nah, it's me, dude. F*** off. So he takes off. He goes out to his car and he's talking to his daughter. He literally relays this information to his daughter. And his daughter's like, wait, what? what? Tell me again what happened? And he tells her. And then she's like, wait. Are you sure she wasn't pranking you? Everybody is so lost. Kevin and his daughter, their minds are blown. He killed it. They had a great time today. And now it's all gone. Margaret goes to see Stacy. Margaret goes to see who she thinks is Stacy, who is actually Fiona. I know this movie inside and out now, and this is still complicated for me. Margaret goes to see Stacy, who is actually Fiona, to switch spots back, in which Fiona, impersonating Stacy, says, Nah, I ain't having it. We're not switching back now. She realized that they did the switch. She realized that Margaret's talking to her, like, let's switch back. And she's like, nah, I'm not having it. I, I, I'm just going to keep your power. And she's like, it's not funny. Switch back now. And she goes, no, dude. You make a scene, I'm going to kick you out of the palace. This is my palace. And it's like, wait, what? Stacy, the game is over. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. This isn't funny. It's time to switch back. I insist you take your leave at once. You must be joking. Or would you rather I call the guard and have you thrown out? So she leaves, Margaret leaves, and she runs into Prince Edward, Stacy's husband. And she's like, oh, uh, by the way, at this time, Stacy's kidnapped. She's been in a closet for like the past half hour. They like chloroformed her and knocked her out like hardcore. It was nuts. Uh, so now Margaret runs into Prince Edward, Stacy's husband, and is like, he's like, hey, what's up, honey? And she goes, like, I'm not your honey. It's me, Margaret. Why are you uh, speaking with a different accent? I'm not speaking with an accent. I'm Margaret. <laughs> and he goes, what? And she goes, yeah, it's me, Margaret. And he's like, oh, you guys said you would never do this. And she goes, I know. I told her, I told her not to tell. So he's like, where's my wife? And she goes, she's being a bitch. <laughs> she's like, she's not giving me my power back. She, don't want, she won't switch back, dude. And he goes, are you sure that doesn't sound like my wife? And she tells him, like, here's what happened. I said this. She said no. And they go through it. Then two random people show up. And it's like, this chick just fired her. This lady's, like, lady, her assistant or something. And she shows up and she's like, this lady just fired me. Mrs. Donatelli, are you all right? No. No, I am most certainly not all right. The most awful thing has happened. After 25 years of loyal service, Lady Margaret has... Well, she's given me the boot. And the lady's like, are you sure? What happened? Because it doesn't sound like her. And then she tells him, like, man, she fired me. I've been here forever. And then they kind of realize what's going on. At pages 75 to 85, we have the dark night of the soul. This is where your character loses everything. And it couldn't be more complete in this movie. Literally... Margaret loses her kingdom, her power, her boyfriend, and literally lost Stacy. They cannot find her. They don't know where she is. At page 85, we have the break into Act 3. And it's here that our protagonist normally comes up with a new idea, a fresh take, or an inventive way to handle the problems that they've been given. It's here we see the brain trust sit down and figure out everything that's happened, consisting of Margaret, Edward, the lady that just got fired, and a guy who works for Margaret. He was in the first one. I don't really remember his name. But they sit down and they deduce that the person that they were speaking to wasn't really Stacy, but Fiona pretending to be Stacy. And that Fiona must have kidnapped her against her will and is actually holding her about an hour away at her father's old estate. 
They also discover that Fiona has moved the time of the coronation from tomorrow to tonight so she can become queen as soon as possible. After breaking Stacy out, everybody makes a mad dash to interrupt the coronation where Margaret and Stacy run up the aisles looking at Fiona who is being sworn in and everybody's mind is blown. They start saying, I'm her, she's me, everybody's confused. A lot of fancy titles are thrown out. But enter Antonio, who stands by Fiona pretending to be Margaret and says that it's really her. Fiona caves pretty quickly and blames it all on Antonio, which I'm fine with. Margaret decides to loosen the sentence that she would normally give to somebody who just committed treason, in which she will give her probation and a lot of like, you know, not jail. And now we're at the finale, pages 85 to 110, in which we have the classic cliche of chasing the love interest down to the airport before they leave on their flight for the rest of their life never to be seen again. And the whole cast comes with Margaret. I'm talking everybody. They get to the airport and chase Kevin down just in time, to which they explained all the chaos that just ensued, and he says, I get it, you know, clearly that happens uh, every day, you know, kind of cheesy. But spontaneously... Kevin and Margaret get engaged. They find a priest in the airport, which I'm not sure if we're supposed to know this guy from somewhere, but his flight's getting ready to go and he doesn't know if he even has time to marry him. He's like, dude, I gotta roll. My flight's in five minutes. I'm scared. This guy's really not gonna marry him. Dude, they're like, hey, we're pretty famous. Oh, we've been through a lot of shit. You saw it all, buddy. Can you marry us? He's like, my plating board's a five, guys. Like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> they get married, or they get engaged, right? And they were like, do you have a ring? He goes, yeah. Kevin, they're like asking Kevin if he has a ring. He's like, yeah, I have it. It's in my pocket. It's been there since last summer. I've had it, I've had it on me since last summer. And, like, the audience loses their shit. Like, the people in the train station really care about this for some reason. They've never met this guy before in their life. But he goes... Yeah, I don't even know how they hear it. You're at a train station. There's people talking constantly. But essentially, there's all these people focused around these two people in public. And he's like, oh, I've had this ring on me since last summer. And everybody's like, oh, oh. check it out. I don't suppose you have a ring? <laughs> I bought it last summer. Then we move to the coronation. We see everybody there. We're wrapping everything up in a nice little bow. Margaret's going to become queen and all of her friends and family are there. And then we see Edward and Stacy talking about how they want to work harder on their relationship because they love one another. And there's some kind of alluding to whether or not they might have a baby. But it's almost at this point, it's almost like they expect the audience to be like, oh, I get it. It's going to be like a princess switched, switched at birth or something. Now we're at page 110, the final image. We see everything wrapped up. We see Margaret become queen with Kevin at her side. Roll credits. If you think about it, this whole movie is just a game of Among Us with princesses instead of astronauts. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. Even if you just click through it, it counts as engagement on YouTube. So I appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe if you're passionate, thinking about, or just wondering about screenwriting, if it's something that interests you. I'm going to be making more videos of everything I'm learning in school, from character development to dialogue, plot, story, structure. Uh, I'm going to dive real heavy into those, kind of teaching everybody the fundamentals of screenwriting.